Hey everyone, Bob here from Knights of Last Call. You might be wondering, why is Bob talking to me today? It's to tell you about what's been happening the past few weeks in Southern Beaches, our Northern Reaches mega campaign for Pathfinder 2E. My goal here is to give you a really quick recap of the past few weeks in Southern Beaches. Now you could go to the Game Write-Ups channel and read all this stuff, but I figured I'd give you a very high level, thousand foot level view of Southern Beaches. Let's do this very quickly. We have four zones. Sapphire Lagoons, Sunfire Plateau, Shadow Shell Cove, and Coral Heart Jungle. Not to mention our Serenity Sands Resort, where everyone is uh, getting comfy. So what's been going on? Let's start with Sapphire Lagoons. Over in the Sapphire Lagoons, the party made an alliance with the Chief River Breaker, a goblin. And they teamed up to defeat the Elementals. Then, after defeating them, they backstabbed them to get the treasure. Now this could open up a whole can of worms. Stay tuned later to find out. But maybe you're interested in something different in the Sapphire Lagoons. How about punching sharks in the arena? That's been going on as well. Maybe you'll find yourself rolling over to the beaches in the Sapphire Lagoons. One of the parties built a massive sandcastle to defend Princess Chonk and then fought waves of crabs and sandmen. They eventually lost, but not before making an epic sandcastle. The party has also opened up a treasure vault and found one of the massed fallen pinned to the wall with an iron spike. Later on, a party was asked to help save a beached whale. Then noticed the naughty guests from the neighboring Private Paradise Premium Club, the PPP, as we've come to know them. Their resort threw trash all over the beach, and they beached the orca overnight. The party helped clean up the beach while defending off creatures attacking the whale. Then it helped push it back into the water. Now the party is teaming up with exiled merfolk to fight against the goblin. Let's mosey on over to the Sunfire Plateau. Players here have found a magical fae spring that has healing properties, but this spring is in the fae realm. They discovered a portal to get there. The fae do not welcome outsiders and will need to be killed to provide permanent access to get these healing potions. The players have found out that the old man quest giver is abusive towards children. They had found the alchemist and his lair. Now it is apparently very trapped. Now, we talked earlier about the shark punching arena, but now the fight has taken itself to the land. Fighting on the beaches is more this play, this, more this zone style. A big ass, but Chef Cleaver O'Galley has a quest to recover a couple of exceptional giant terror strike eggs. The party was able to get these items and help whip it into some of the fluffiest omelets the world has ever seen. But that's not all the chef wanted. He wanted some delicious candied hydro bacon for the resort as well. Now, the party was going to have to go lure the hydra away from its nest, but not prevent it from running back, getting the attention of its mate before dying to be able to slay and harvest their bacon. The chef was very happy. Speaking of that fey realm, there's dwarves in the fey realm. They just want to be left alone. Sunfire Plateau is, is known for its many cliffs, but there's a 500 foot cliff wall with caves to explore at various heights. Very hard to get to. Make sure you're prepared to get to these caves. They have found signs of long gone elves as well as some kind of sucking hole. Maybe the Shadow Shell Cove is the place to relax. One party encountered several undead. They found out that the undead were really humans from the resort that have been cursed by the Witch of the Shadow Cove. Now she has her eyes set on the adventurers. There's also a shrine to Gogonta here, but the PC's desecrated by stealing from it. On one quest, the PC was were able to rescue the missing researcher, skirt some valuable data, and fought off groups of undead sailors, including crab-mounted artillery? Maybe you were in the first volleyball match. Last night's versus the troll hammers. Good thing the last night's won 2-0. Now this one's interesting. The PCs were once again contracted by Felden, and they were, they were able to re retrieve the remaining data from earlier. They discovered that the measuring device he was using to study a strange arcane phenomenon ended up channeling electro-arcane magic into, deadly, into a deadly maelstrom, reanimating nearby corpses and throwing lightning across the room. Could Feldon be on the cusp of pioneering a scientific field of electricity based on corpse reanimation? And last but not least, the Coral Heart Jungle. The party made a promise to Jimmy Puffett to find some ice cubes after the resort ran out of ice. They had a trek through the jungle, but they ended up finding the Ice Wallow Cave and fought an ice golem and an icy spider where at the back of the cave it led to the ice plane but they were able to get those ice cubes for the new drinks at Jimmy's new bar. There was also a rumor about an abnormally violent unicorn. Party was able to confirm this rumor to be true and able to retrieve said unicorn and bring it back. However, poof, it's gone. But also, a party was able to discover some sort of 
altar of an unknown but ancient entity. What could this be? And if you thought the ice was crazy, now it's time to get some limes for those drinks. They found some aporials that had tons of fruit if they agreed to help find the lost warden of the grove. In doing so, they found a chest impossible to open. Aporials warded them, the limes, and they found out that they worshipped something called the Green Death. Now that's the four zones, but what is it that makes KLC Mega Game unique? The events and the progress clocks. Let's talk about one of the events that's going on first. We have the good east side versus west side event clock going on. During the duration of this event, for any encounter with goblins and or hobgoblins in the Sunfire Plateau, GMs must give any number of goblins or hobgoblins in the encounter the weak template, which does not affect the encounter budget. For an encounter with the goblins or hobgoblins in the Sapphire Lagoon, the GMs must give any number of the hobgoblins or goblins in the encounter the weak template, which does not affect the encounter budget. And we have two progress clocks going on right now. Ancient Mysteries and Stirrings in the Night. Ancient Mysteries at the time of this recording, plus three on the ticks, plus three on the clock, and Stirrings of the Night, minus one on that clock. Make sure you check those out in the progress clocks. Now it's time to give a shout out to our players, our PCs. What achievements have they unlocked so far? Now this isn't all of the PCs. Not everyone's reported their achievements to me, but I just wanted to give a couple shout outs to the people that did. One that's near and dear to my heart, Master of Lives, Master of Corlwind, creating an adventure site in at least four different zones, but also the expert adventurer playing a session in four plus zones. And then Zeratog, Social Butterfly, play with 10 different fellow patrons as a PC. He also gained the fellowship achievement, completing a quest with a party consisting of all different ancestries. And two amazing ones, I'll say. Spray and Pray, critically hit while at minus 10 map, and then high noon, kill three plus enemies with, with attacks in one turn. That's how you do it. Now again, hopefully this is a quick recap. If you guys like this kind of thing, I'll try to keep doing them. If this sort of becomes annoying or unneeded. I don't have to keep doing these. You guys can read the write-ups. But I thought maybe this would be a good way to do a quick recap from something GM Council gave me. And I'm able to get that quickly information over to you guys. So let me know um, if, if, I, if you want me to keep doing this or if you guys don't like this and you don't need this. Thank you guys. Enjoy vacation.